saints and in the Lord Jesus I'm so excited to come to you again and to know that God has spared our lives another week and given us the opportunity to continue to work in his vineyard we trust you had a great week last week and you're anticipating a great time with God this week amen we're offering to you an opportunity now to go right ahead and give streaming across your screen right now or the various ways in which you can give you can give by going to our website www.cometocalvary.com or you can give by texting or you can mail in your offering or if better yet you can bring it by the sanctuary somebody will be here to receive it from you we appreciate your faithfulness and we are confident that the god of heaven he will continue to prosper us therefore we servants will always rise and build let's pray in jesus name father we thank you for the opportunity you gave us to give we thank you for this covenant relationship freely we have received we now only freely bring to you our tithes and our offerings expressions of our appreciation and gratitude to you also expressions of our faith and trust that you will supply every need according to your riches and glory bless every gift and every giver in jesus name we pray amen god bless you and continue to trust in the god there's no god like him in jesus name we greet you amen god is the greatest power he shall never be defeated we shall never be defeated wherever you are worship with us as we give god a praise
sing, I shall rise. I shall rise. I shall be. I shall be. And I shall go. I shall go. Victory. Victory. No weapon formed against me. There's a liar God is exalted Never be defeated hey. Never be defeated Do you believe it? The devil is a liar God is exalted Never be defeated Never be defeated The devil is a liar God is exalted be the feeling. Never 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 be the feeling. The devil is a liar. Never be the feeling. Never be the feeling. Never be the feeling. Never be the feeling. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated.
Amen. I'm so glad I got a God that can fight on my behalf. And he guarantees a victory every time. Whatever you're facing, you need to involve God in the situation. And rest assured, your God is fighting for you. And you are going to win. Hallelujah. Praise over God. We thank the praise team, the musicians, for setting the atmosphere for the ministry of the word of God today. The word of the Lord comes to us from the book of Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38. And we're reading verses 1 through 5 and verses 18 and 19. Isaiah chapter 38 verses 1 to 5 and verses 18 and 19. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Ezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Ezekiah, Thus said the Lord, the God of David thy father, I've heard thy prayer, I've seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thee 15 years. Hallelujah. Verse 18 and 19. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once more for your call and for your anointing. We stand now craving for your glory to rest upon us and upon those that will hear us. We pray for your will to be done here in this portion of the vineyard. But we ask for it to be done around the world, wherever your gospel is being preached and your name is being declared. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. And we give you praise in advance for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach this morning on the subject, one word, live, hallelujah, amen, live, the Holy Ghost says to tell everybody, hear me today, live, amen, praise the word God, you shall live and not die and declare the glory of Almighty God, hallelujah, I don't know what plans you have made for yourself, but if it involves death, you need to cancel it. Because the Holy Ghost wants you to live and add more years to your life. Slap yourself, hallelujah, somewhere and say, live, 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 live. God's going to add more years to your life. To properly understand this text, we need to also read 2 King, Kings chapter 18 and 19. Isaiah 38 deals with the story of Ezekiah and his encounter with the king of Assyria. But in 2 Kings 18 and 19, it's elaborated upon. Because of time, we're going to try and marry these two passages together. So from one point, we will deal with Isaiah and then we'll also mention 2 Kings 9, 18 and 19 to elaborate on the story. But I do recommend that you do read 2 Kings 18 and 19. It will bring the message home to you. Praise our God. Ezekiah took the reign of Judah at the age of 25. And the Bible makes us to understand that he reigned for 29 years and the scripture said he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He led one of the greatest revival that Israel, Judah has ever seen. He tore down the altars of the idols that Israel were worshipping at. He pulled down the brazen serpent that Moses 
Moses had made in the wilderness that the people were now worshiping instead of worshiping Jehovah God. He restored worship back on the Sabbath day. Ezekiah is noted as one of the good kings of Judah. But even good kings have crises. Even good kings have bad experiences. Being good does not exempt us from having difficult and trying times. Good people, my brothers and sisters, have bad days. Good people get sick. Amen. That's a good place to hit amen, like, and share with somebody. Good people get laid off from their jobs. Good people go through a pandemic. Hallelujah. Good people do get the virus. My God, but thank God. Good people even die, but many good people even survive. I'm trying to make the case that good people being good does not exempt you from going through situations in your life that are going to be challenging and make a demand on you to trust and to reach up to God to help you good people have bad children glory to God thank God amen the Lord gives grace amen if you don't believe me that good people go through difficult times just remind yourself of the story of Job and you will recall that being good does not exempt you from having difficult times. Ezekiah, though a good king, was not exempt from life crises. And you and I, even though we are attempting to be good, because there's none good but one, even though we're attempting to be good, we're still going to have difficulty. I want to lift from the Ezekiah story three points three crises three three problem that he faced that you and i are going to encounter and glean from it how he overcame it and use that to encourage you that when you go through difficult times when you go through hard times if god helped ezekiah god's going to help you too number one ezekiah amen had past influences in his life that he had to overcome he had past influences in his life that he had to overcome every one of us have a past that we're going to have to deal with every one of us have issues amen in our family tree in our family heritage that we're going to have to deal with i read a quotation from marcus garvey that said a people without the knowledge of their past history origin and culture is like a tree without roots mm, let me say it again a people without the knowledge of their past history origin and culture is like a tree without roots can you make me build this a little bit because it's so important that you and i do not live and not think that we are connected to our past. We, we have a past, we have family members, we have grandparents in our past, and the things that happened back then can affect you now if you're not careful. So it's very important, amen, if I should do like Marcus Garvey did, that you connect to your root, even though you might be a branch laden with fruits, you better check the root because if you're not careful that root might determine how your life is going to come amen it's proven that our core identity is connected to our past knowing our cultural background and where we came from can help us develop a strong sense of who we really are and help us create our own narratives about ourselves it also helps us to establish our unique, authentic core identity. Some people don't know themselves because they don't know their past. Knowing your past will help you to discover your core identity. It gives you a sense of connection. And the more we discover our past, the greater connection we feel to our ancestors and as we record our own history we open the opportunity for future generations to connect with us when we are gone there is a tech talk amen that entitled everything you think you know about addiction is wrong 
And I suggest that you go look up this TED Talk. The title is, Everything You Think You Know About Addiction Is Wrong. The British journalist, John and Harry, teaches in that conversation that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. It is connection. Connecting with members of our family, past and present, by learning their history, fills an innate need in each of us. When you are not connected to your past, most people end up seeking something to make them feel good. Hallelujah. But the, the conversation that TED Talk says, if you're connected to your past, chances are you'll not become addicted to something. So, so, so if anybody listening to me right now and you are facing addiction, you might want to visit your past. You might want to discover your history and see what went on there and how they overcame or how they succumbed to what they went through because it might be affecting you. And you can't medicate your pain with drugs. You can't medicate your pain with alcohol. You need to address the past. Hallelujah. Um, let, let me move on. So Ezekiah, he had a past that he had to deal with. Ezekiah's dad, his name was Hayes. And Hayes was not a good role model for him. Hayes, Ezekiah's father, led Israel in idolatry. He destroyed the altars of Jehovah and erected altars to Baal. Yes, the king of Israel, Hayes, did. And he forced Israel to worship at every green tree. He made his children, hallelujah, participate in idolatry and pass them through the fire. He never taught Ezekiah from the Pentateuch and taught him, Hero Israel, the Lord of our God was one is one Lord. We have no record of Ezekiah of Ahaz ever taken Ezekiah up to the temple to, to worship Jehovah God. But the Bible makes me to understand when Ahaz died and Ezekiah took the throne at 25, he made up in his mind that he was not going to be like his father. Can I suggest you can change your, your, your future by making a simple decision, knowing your past and deciding that's not what you want for your present or for your future glory to God he decided he was not going to continue in the footsteps of his father but follow the prodding and the dictates of his heart and serve Jehovah God he decided that he was going to live his life to please Jehovah this makes me aware this makes me convinced that even if we don't have good role models in our past we can live a life pleasing to God. I don't have to be brought up into the church and taught from a child how to love God in order to love God. When God appears to me, I need to learn how to respond to him. The Bible tells me that the grace of God has appeared unto all men and has taught us how to live soberly and godly and righteously in this present world. Yes, a history, a godly history is helpful, but it's not the only thing you need to live a godly life. The grace of God will help you. I need somebody to help me because you have experienced the grace of God. You didn't have a good role model. You didn't have a good past history but the grace of God came and snatched you. The grace of God put you on the path of righteousness and by the grace of God you are what you are by the grace of almighty God. Somebody hit like, share and give God praise because you know it was grace that saved you. Not of works lest any man should boast. It was the grace of God that brought you salvation. Hallelujah. So, so your family history might be corrupt. It might be devilish. It might be evil. Yet you can rise above that. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot rise above your past. I don't care what went on. Hallelujah. God, by his grace, can appear in your life and lift you up above the past. Glory to God. You might have an alcoholic 
amen family member in your history but it doesn't mean that you're going to have to be an alcoholic god can change you you might have a ray up in your past but the blood thread can snatch you and and change your destiny i wish i had somebody that will not deny their past but recognize that the god that we serve has the power to lift you and to shift you from that and bring you into your own divine destiny you can have convicts and corrupted relatives but you can still rise above that what is in your past doesn't have to be a part of your future their yesterday doesn't have to be a part of your today or your tomorrow you can make a decision like Ezekiah did hallelujah that you can rise above that can i talk to a, a, a young adult amen like Ezekiah 25 it was a pivotal point in his life where he decided I'm going to be a man I'm going to I'm not going to follow what my parents did I'm going to stand I'm going to be like a Daniel dare to be a Daniel dare to stand alone dare to have a purpose firm and dare to make it on you know God is talking to you you know God is pulling you from that ancestry amen idolatry from that evil corrupt lifestyle that you saw and god has a new path for you you can rise up above that ezekiah prove that it can happen if any man be in christ the bible says he's a new creature all things are passed away and all things have become new i feel an anointing of the holy ghost to tell somebody i see a brighter future for you i see a godly future for you it's not going to be like what you had in the past it's going to shift and change god's going to get glory out of your life and you better believe it your past might have been full with problems but you can break that cycle your past might have been full of molestation but you can break that cycle your past might be full of crime and war hey amen but you can break that cycle you can break it in the name of jesus hallelujah shout jesus break it break it break it jesus breaks every feather hallelujah and he can give you the victory i love what paul says in the book of Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14 brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for the things which are before I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus I call upon somebody today to forget the past and start pressing forget the past and start pressing press towards the mark the higher calling that God has for your life your life has something better in store but you're going to have to forget the past and start pressing I submit it is not as easy as it sounds amen but Ezekiah gave us an example of how he did it how did he get over the past how did he do it look in second Kings chapter 18 verses 5 and 6 and we have two things that Ezekiah did to help him to overcome the past and if I were you I'd take my pen out and start writing these two things down because what he did if you do it you can also get over the past forget A as your dad and his evil ways and start to worship and live a life that's pleasing to God listen the Bible says in 2nd Kings 18 5 and 6 Ezekiah trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah nor any that were before him hallelujah number one Ezekiah trusted in the Lord God hallelujah so that after him was none like him among all the kings of judah nor any that were before him ezekiah lifted himself above his past and started trusting in the lord god and he trusted god like no other king before him nor any other king after him my god that that's encouraging he got a hold of god so 
deep in his spirit that he trusted God like no other king of Judah. There's no other king recorded that trusted God like Ezekiah. Oh my God, that's powerful. So I'm telling you, number one, you if you want to get over your past, you can't trust what happened in the past you can't trust in the arm of flesh you can't even trust yourself but you got to trust in god i call upon you today to trust in the lord your god for they that trust in the lord shall be like mount zion which cannot be removed but abide it forever when you start putting your trust in god nothing can shift you nothing can shake you nothing can turn you around you'll be steadfast you'll be unmovable hallelujah no matter what comes your way you will stand still and see the salvation of the lord your god because you're trusting the god who cannot fail hallelujah behold god is my salvation i will trust and not be afraid for the lord jehovah is my strength and my song he also become my salvation the arm of flesh will fail you but your trust in God will break the cycle of the past. Trust in God. No matter what you're going through, I don't care what happened in the past, how your ancestors failed, how they succumbed to situations, you can turn your life around. And their failure doesn't have to be a part of your history if you just shift and put your trust in God. Trust in God. No matter what's going on, do like Ezekiah did, trust in the Lord your God. The second thing that we see Ezekiah doing that helped him to overcome his past is found in verse 6. Listen, for he claved to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments which the Lord, which the Lord Moses commanded. Which the Lord commanded Moses. Hallelujah. Number one, he trusted God. Number two, he claimed to the Lord. He said, look, I'm trusting God and I'm holding on to you and I'm not letting you go. I don't care what's going on. I'm clinging to you. I'm fasting to you. I'm hooking up with you. Hallelujah. I'm going to hold you for life. It sounds like Jacob to me. I will not let you go until you bless me. I don't care what kind of pain I'm in. I don't care you disjoint my, my limbs. I'm holding you for life until you bless me. Because if I ever let you go, I don't know who else I can trust. If I ever let you slip out of my life, I don't know who else I can lean on. I found hallelujah are you to be a god that's trustworthy dependable reliable faithful compassionate loving and kind and i'm holding on to you for life say my god so i'm saying to you if you want to overcome your past do like Ezekiah did number one trust in the lord your god number two hold on to him and don't let him go hallelujah let your friends go but don't let God go. Let the job go, but don't let God go. Let the money go, but don't let God go. Hallelujah. Let, let, let what you love go, but don't let God go out of your life. Because if you have God and you hold on to him, you have everything. Hallelujah. Do like Job did. Take everything. Hmm. Destroy it all in a day. But I will hold my integrity. I'll trust God. Though he slay me, yet will i trust him i'm holding on to you god even when your wife says curse him and let him go joe said you gotta be crazy you can go but i'm holding god and it turned around for him and i'm telling you it'll turn around for you your past influences and your past history will not define your future amen if it didn't do it for Ezekiah, it doesn't have to do it for you so if you apply those two principles trust god hallelujah and hold on to him cleave on to him the second crisis that we find ezekiah had to face in his life is this he had to face political problems <laughs> he was a king and he was a noteworthy king he was a radical king he disrupted the routine and the norm of the day tore down the idol the, the, the temples of idols tore down the altars of idols he, he shifted 
got the nation to worship Jehovah. Amen. No wonder the devil was mad. And so, so the king of Assyria rose up against Ezekiah. To make the story short, he threatened Ezekiah, amen, to take them out. It's important to note that when Assyria threatened Ezekiah, king of Judah, Ezekiah went into the temple of God and he took all the gold that he could find and, and everything of value and he gave it over to the king of Assyria to appease him. But that could not appease the enemy. Can I tell you, we are not, when you come up against political opposition and problems, when you come up against forces, amen, in high places, you should not attempt to appease them. Don't give them what God gave you. Stand still and trust God, even in the political situation that the God that helped you over the past will help you in this political crisis listen amen they attacked Israel in three ways number one amen the king of Assyria said look don't you dare trust the leaders of Israel Ezekiah in particular that he can deliver you he's deceiving you to making you think that he can he can deliver you out of my hand and and they reminded the Israelites that they had conquered every other nation and there was no nation that could withstand their assault hallelujah everywhere Syria the Syrians went they were conquering plundering amen exploiting people and now they come up against Israel and they made it clear nobody else could stand against us and you can't stand it so don't you let Ezekiah talk you into fighting and resisting you better surrender hallelujah amen I want to tell you that the enemy is going to do the same thing to you when he comes against you politically he will threaten the leadership because the, he knows if he strike the shepherd, strike the leader, then, then the sheep will be scattered. But I dare tell you the God that we serve is looking on and he's going to help. The second thing the Syrians did, they, they, they moved from, from convincing Israel that the leadership could not help them. And they said, and let me tell you, they said the God of Israel, the God that you serve, he too is not able to deliver you <laughs> so don't trust the leadership and don't trust God <laughs> because God cannot deliver you and the third thing they did they threatened them intimidated them by the words that they spoke and by the letters that they write <laughs> hallelujah you've got to watch how the enemy operates He's, he tries to snatch leadership out of your life <laughs> hallelujah he tries to snatch your confidence out of your God and then he speaks into your spirit words that will discourage you and then he documents the stuff and make it make it a law but I've come to tell you the threefold cord in his mind is not easily broken but he has come up against the wrong people the God that you serve is gonna fight for you the God that you serve is able to break every fetter and give you the victory again and again the devil is doing the same thing today that he did in Ezekiah's time but I've come to tell him we are well able to overcome you the God that helped Ezekiah to get out of the hand of the Assyrian king is the same God that's going to help us and help you when you come against the powers of darkness when you come against principles and powers and rulers in high places when they try to snatch you amen from having the victory that God has assigned to you God is going to help to fight your battle it takes good leadership to bring prosperity to God's people and to see the manifestation of God's promises let's believe God to give us good leadership can I make a break and a plug right here we need good leadership in our government right now the nation is in trouble and we as a people 
people need to cry out to God for good leadership because good leadership determines what happens to the people. Let's believe God for servant leaders. Let's believe God for servants. Amen. Leaders that will serve not just God but serve God's people and not just serve their selected few and their friends. We need good leadership in this country. We need good leadership around the world and we need good leadership in the church and good leadership in our homes. When you have that type of leadership, God leadership, don't let the enemy deceive you and divide you. Amen. But what you need to do is to pray for them that they will keep themselves under the covering of Almighty God. It's one thing for the leader, for the enemy to attack the leader, but when the enemy goes up and tries to attack your confidence in God, he's crossed the wrong line. Hallelujah. You better understand, he knows if he can take away your confidence, you'll have no reward. But oh, God is not going to let him take out of your heart confidence in him and confidence in your leadership you just need to talk to daniel they might throw you in the lion's den but god will show up talk to the three hebrew boys they might throw you into the fiery furnace but god will show up talk to moses amen they might threaten you but your god will send the plagues and deliver you talk to paul and silas god might allow you to go in jail he might allow them to chain you but oh you still have amen your praise and a visitation from almighty god he'll rock that jail he'll shake those feathers and set you free the god that you serve has never lost a battle he is still the conquering lion of the tribe of judah he'll break every chain and give you the victory again and again I've been asked by the Holy Ghost to free you from intimidation I don't know who is talking into your spirit I don't know who is trying to tell you you're going to lose but I've been sent by God you cannot lose the back of the book says you win greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world have you forgotten you are more than conquerors through him that loves you oh come on church put on the whole armor of God and get up and fight fight the good fight of faith you are guaranteed victory in almighty god so when the enemy comes in with you like a to you like a flood the spirit of god is going to lift up a standard and i speak against that enemy that's trying to snatch you my god from under the covering of god leadership i speak to that spirit that's trying to persuade you that god cannot deliver you the devil is a liar he's a mighty god he's a strong god he's a delivering god and you are going to be delivered from the snare of the enemy in jesus name the enemy tried to intimidate them by word of mouth but the prophet told them when the enemy speaks don't answer a word so i'm saying to you you don't need to go into a debate an argument with the enemy when they come up against you and they say all kind of stuff amen to you just shut your mouth hold your peace and let the lord fight your battle when you come up against political opposition, when you come up to fight amen, principalities and powers and spiritual weakness in high places, you don't speak amen to those spirits. You hold your peace because your silence is an expression of your confidence that God has already won the battle. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And when, when they open their mouth against God, you don't need to speak for God. God can speak for himself. So step out the way and say, look, Lord, look what they're saying. I suggest you do like what Ezekiah did. Take the letter, bring it into the sanctuary and speak run it before God's presence and call God's attention look what they said about you they said you brought us out but you can't bring us in they said you brought us out but you can't feed us oh the devil is a liar draw God's attention to what they're saying but you don't say a word to them I tell somebody shut your mouth you talk too much this battle is not yours it's the Lord's hallelujah the bible says the enemy 
did not stop when they realized that Israel was not responded. So they sent letters. So when, 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 you, when you respond by not speaking, they, 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 they escalate the intimidation make laws and precepts and, and, and try to intimidate you but still just spread it before God and, and when you draw God's attention to it the Bible says the prophet went back and said this is what God said I heard what he said he said I can't deliver you but tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to send a rumor and he's going to go back the way he came He's not going to come into Judah. He's not going to pass your gates. He's not going to even set foot in your city. I'm going to block him and stop him. I feel a praise right there. To tell somebody the devil is not coming past your gate. The devil is not coming past your house. The devil is, you draw the line and tell the devil you can't pass. The Holy Ghost says there's a barrier fixed and you can't pass this old oh, God, I feel God right there. Tell him back up, back up, back up. Because God says he's sending a rumor. You're going to hear something in your head that's going to take you back home. But you're not coming this far. You've come too far. You've gone too far. God says, I'm going to send him a rumor. And he's going to go back the way he came. And he's not going to enter into your city and i love what else the bible says the bible says god says i'm gonna put a hook in his nose <laughs> in other words he won't want to come willingly <laughs> but i'm gonna hook him up <laughs> hallelujah like a fish and then i'm gonna put a bridle in his lips <laughs> treat him like an animal and a fish <laughs> i'm gonna hook him <laughs> and bridle him <laughs> in other words control his tongue and control his movement and pull him I feel God telling somebody I'm pulling the enemy out of your life I'm pulling the enemy out of your business I'm reeling him in hallelujah he's gone too far but I've hooked him and I'm pulling him back I feel God sending a rumor right now into the camp of your enemy I see God hooking your enemies and plucking them up I see God brightening their lips my God and fighting the battle on your behalf hallelujah and the Bible said while the Assyrians that night went to sleep, hallelujah, uh, the Lord moved in the camp and 185,000 soldiers of the Assyrian camp died overnight. <laughs> hallelujah, not one shot was fired by the Israelites, not one sword was pulled by the Israelites, not one word was said by Israel, not one letter was written by Israel, but God fought the battle. I'm telling somebody that God that you serve will fight for you if you let him. When you come up against the powers of darkness, hold your peace and let God hear what they say. Spread up before God the intimidation letters that they give to you. When they fire you, hallelujah, without cause, take the letter and spread it before God. When they give you eviction notice and you don't deserve it, take the letter and spread it before God. When they serve you divorce papers, take it and spread it before God and tell God, you gotta look, you gotta look, you gotta look. You can read, can't you, can't you, can't you read? And let God see it and I guarantee you he will fight the battle for you and give you the victory again and again. Go read amen second kings 19 the bible said that the king of assyria went back home and do you know who took his life out his own son i'm telling you god won't let your hands be touched with blood god won't let you be involved in the killing but god will turn their own family members against them i send war in the camp of your enemy i turn them against each other in the name of jesus you just you just lift your hands in praise and let God do the work for you. By the time you wake up in the morning, your enemy will be on the ground. And the assass assassin from their own house is going to take their life. Clap your hands, hit like it, share, and tell the devil, you've gone too far. You have involved not just my leader, you have involved my God. And now God is going to take care of you. And I feel a praise break right there. Glory to God. 
hallelujah don't mess with God's people so when you face political opposition when you face principalities and powers hold your peace when they intimidate you amen in letters take it and spread it before God and let God move on your behalf the third thing let me hurry that Ezekiah faced in his life was what I will call personal crisis he had past influences he had political problems and now he has personal crisis my conclusion to this is the previous two stress season that Ezekiah went through dealing with his past and rising above it undoing the work of his father and the other kings before him dealing with the pressure from the opposition the Assyrian king caused him in my view physical stress and he became sick a warning to people as you deal with situation take time to deal with your body hallelujah take rest and exercise and eat right so you can handle the pressure that comes hallelujah and the bible says ezekiah was now sick and the lord sent isaiah and said to him set your house in order because you can surely die it doesn't mean that God was against him so much but God had made a promise to the house of Judah that there will be somebody on the throne of Judah hallelujah and Ezekiah had no children so God was saying to him you, you're, you're running out of time and you need to make sure that the, the, the kingdom is, is, is transferred properly and there's somebody from the house of Judah on the throne hallelujah Ezekiah upon hearing the words of Isaiah the Bible says he went to pray and he, at the end of the prayer God sent back Isaiah into the camp into the palace and says oh the Lord says he's reversing the death sentence hallelujah I feel like saying there's a reversal right now there's a reversal right now I don't care what the doctor said I don't care what time they gave you I don't care what they proved what the blood showed i don't care what 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 the biopsy said i don't care what the verdict was god says i'm reversing it. i'm reversing it right now he's reversing your financial situation if anybody can believe that the god that that allowed the verdict to be passed of death as the ability to reverse it you better shout and give god praise there is a reversal right now somebody who was slated to die somebody whose children was slated to be taken out somebody who had a family member that was at a set time to live god says i'm reversing it right now and instead of taking you out i'm gonna add more years to your life glory to god i'm so glad that i serve a god that has the power to make a law and the power to cancel a law i'm so glad i serve a god who can bring death and that can bring life and today he sent me to tell you you shall not die you shall live if you can believe the word of almighty god death is not your future death is not in god's plans for you no more he just canceled the date that was set for you and has just added more life to you glory to god i feel a praise right there somebody to celebrate god i need some intercessors around the world to help me send that death from somebody's house and bring life by god in the name of jesus ezekiah pleaded his case and in summary he said listen lord amen if you take me out the grave cannot praise thee and death cannot celebrate thee amen and they that go down in the pit cannot hope for your truth the living the living shall praise thee so he carefully said to god look it's all right if you take me out but if you take me out and put me in the grave i can't celebrate you if you take my life i can't praise you if you take me out i can't see the manifestation of your promises but if you keep me alive i promise you if i'm above ground standing on the grave instead of being in the grave i'm gonna celebrate you to those that i'm speaking to today that i'm proclaiming 
proclaiming a reversal of death you need to stand up and tell God if I'm above ground you can watch me celebrate I'll celebrate in the morning I'll celebrate in the evening I'll celebrate in the midnight even while I'm sleeping I'll celebrate you no matter where I am you can depend on me to make a joyful noise unto the Lord my God I'll clap my hands I'll spin around I'll dance and shout I'll celebrate you I'll praise you if you dare to reverse my my death sentence you can depend on me to give you praise no you can deal with your personal problems and crises if you tell God no matter what happens if you alleviate this if you reverse this you can depend on me to give you praise I feel a hallelujah shout just about now I feel somebody breaking free doing like Ezekiah did I will celebrate you I will praise you I will live and see the manifestation of your promises in my life glory to God my past I'll overcome it by trusting you and cleaving to you my political problems I'll overcome it by holding my mouth and telling you the situation and let you fight it my personal problems I'll overcome in them by telling you I'll praise you I'll celebrate you I'll rejoice in your truth I'm come to tell somebody live and trust God live holding on to God live holding your peace and let God fight your battle live and celebrate God live and praise God somebody shout live in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah I dare you to share this message with your friends and with your families and let them know the word of the Lord today to speak to them is live there is no death in the pot there's no debt in your family there's no debt in your horizon God says live I want you to overcome your past by trusting me hallelujah and cleaving to me live I want you to fight the political forces the spiritual weakness in high places amen the deep dark things and let them know you don't have to do a thing but I'll show up and fight for you live and let God know no problem no problem you have you can overcome by giving God praise and glory share this with somebody and tell them live in Jesus name let's pray father we we speak life to your people today we speak life to every discouraged person we speak life to everyone who the enemy has come up against. We speak life to those that are facing personal crises. We speak life to them. To everyone with a past that's so heavy and dark. We speak life to them. Let them live in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.